here at PAX South looking at Kingdom Come Deliverance with Rick. So, um, right off the bat, let's talk about the fact that this is a, this is a game that unavoidably people are going to look at it, they're going to think, oh, I recognize this, it looks a lot like Skyrim. Um, mm-hmm. So, but while that might be like a pulling point, a hook or something that's going to get people into the game, it, it certainly doesn't play the same as Skyrim. It's uh, far more involved. It's also historically accurate. There's no spell or magic, as you've told me. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell me about the way that, for someone who who thinks, oh, I've I've played a game that looks just like that, what... What are they, what, what's what the first thing sure. they're going to notice? Well, well, being that we base our game on actual history, that also has to do with the combat, where it's uh, based on historical European martial arts. Okay. So when you're going into combat, uh, we use a physical collision system. So what we do is we calculate what weapon you're using, uh, what type of armor they're wearing or not wearing, and how hard you actually hit them. Okay. So if you have someone who's a skilled warrior and, or a skilled knight, and he has no helmet on, even if you have a lower skill, swordsman skill, and you happen to hit him in the head, you can take him right out. Um, also, being historically accurate, uh, we give you the actual... It's, it's based in 1403, right, in Bohemia. Okay. So we, we give you the immersion, the feeling that you are actually there because we've reconstructed castles, towns, villages. We have even, um, with the cry engine and our engine, used the Czech trees and the vegetation in the game. Wow. So you're there. Um, you're there. This is, like I said, the HEMA martial arts, and the choices and decisions you make in the game are one of the best things about our game. Where you can, you have like three to four to five different ways to solve quests. And while there's only one ending, it's it's up to you how you get there. Wow. Okay. So um, it's also an open world game, yep. which you know. How just how big is that open world? How how many how many towns or villages or how many you know castles are we talking about that you can visit that you can you know uh, see experience barter with uh, the people there? Yeah, so there there's there's plenty. I mean, our our map is 16 kilometers square, so there's going to be several castles in the game, several towns and villages. I mean, it's so much so that we you know thought about should we put fast travel in the game or not because there's so many different places you can go to, and we did implement that. But even still, our, our world is a living world. So when you go to these castles and these towns, the, the, uh, the non-playable characters, the NPCs, are actually doing things. So even as you skip ahead, uh, if you use fast travel, you ever play Oregon Trail? Yes. So you can try and skip ahead, and then it'll say, okay, do you want to re- interact with this merchant that's traveling along the way with you, or walks by you, hey, or okay. you're getting attacked, and hey, you can try to escape by pressing so. this button. Fast travel isn't quite like warping around the map. And it's, it's not warping there, around the map. You still have things that are going to come at it's you if you decide. World. If you try to travel to the other side of the map, well, you're you're basically more at the mercy of dice rolls, as it were. Absolutely. And and, and just another thing, too, is our beta that people played. Uh, so we have some fans that put in uh, 100 hours just in our beta alone. That was just one-sixth six of the final version of the game. So like as, as far as game world goes, like yep. uh, space, wow, yep. that's yep. a lot. A hundred hours and one-sixth. Now, you know, I think safe to say the average playthrough will be around 50 hours if you're playing through the, you know, the quests. That's and, still significant. <laughs> and if you're thorough, you could easily put in over a hundred. Oh, wow. So, what about the way that um, skills and capability, you, you, your, your ability to interact with the world, yep. and how do those work? So with the skills, it's, it's like Skyrim. So what you use is what you level up in, right? So if you use your speech skill, you're going to level up your speech. You might be able to smooth talk your way into things or out of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and with the skills, they come, come perks. So if you're trying to use your speech skill, well, like I, we were showing in the demo that they have a speech skill too, the non-playable characters. But it also depends on not just your speech skill, what you're wearing, and what perks you have to maybe help you know more about person, a particular person or with your fighting based on the weapon you're using and how you attack. Yeah, that was one thing that you pointed out. It was the fact that you can actually do proper reconnaissance and um, learn about your enemies and find out what their capabilities are. Enemies, as it were, if you needed to talk to someone or understand how to get around or into a tavern or something, yeah. who's a guard at the door, actually talking to other people around town will actually work. Um, there's a lot of criticism of other RPGs focusing too much on the combat solution, uh, whether it be through you know going in guns blazing or sneaking in. 
just whatever happened to talking. Yeah. And it, sure. it looks a whole lot like talking is really a full-fledged option in this game that you can avoid almost all of the combat. I would say maybe 75, 80% of the game could be avoided entirely with, with choosing not to, you know, fight. Or you could flip it. On the flip side, you could fight your way through most of the game if you want. You could be that barter, the guy who, you know, talks your way out of things and, like, bribes people. You mm -hmm. can do that. You can seduce. Uh, you can also, like, you know, use your stealth skills. And you can be really sneaky. And, you know, you can also use your intimidation skills. So if you have a high intimidation skill, you can maybe scare some gang members out of fighting and to leave the leave the area or else we're going to take you out what about um what about side quests and the like how uh, how large and as as a as a living world how how many extra things are there to do in the world that don't directly have mm. anything to do with the main story that may have impact in the in the sure, longer run sure sure you have some fun things, like you can sharpen your weapon and you can use the grindstone. So you're actually using the sticks. One is controlling your foot and the other one's controlling the wheel and spinning oh, it. Oh, wow. Yep, dice mini game. Uh, that's a fun one. Hanging out and drinking at the pub, because you can do that. And there are skills for drinking, believe it or not. <laughs> There's actually, well, I could go all, in the day, all, all day long about that. But, um, and see, I go on tangents and I forget what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, so you can hunt. Hunting is actually a lot of fun in the game. And sometimes you can actually challenge... Uh, you, you, you might be challenged to see how, how much meat you can get with a certain amount of time, so the game time will go on, the day and night cycle. And there's, there's, you can go after um, bandits. So you, there might be a bounty or some kind of reward to take out these bandits that are causing problems. So there's a lot of different side quests you can do even after the game is over. What about um, trade skills or, and, uh, and guilds? Are there any, is there anything similar or representative of those two things? Well. Not, I wouldn't say necessarily guilds. I mean, like I was saying before, you can actually choose to, you know, work with bandits if you want. If you if you if you refuse to, you know, help certain people out. But it's it's not more of like, um, you know, commanding or guilds or leading. You're you're always going to be Henry, son of a blacksmith, and you're going to be this homeless guy that because his hometown was burned to the ground. You can try and and get the giftings to work with, uh, you know, traders or. Things like that, but you're you're still going to be Henry. You're not going to be, uh, you know, in any particular guild per se. Okay, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay, so. gotcha. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance. It has a release date of one month from today, February thirteenth. Looking forward to it. That you guys uh, enjoy the game as well. I'm probably going to be playing it on Twitch. Thanks. <laughs>